I trained at the Pierce Trim Studios in Hammersmith. Um, I then went to work at the original Studio 13. Um, and then we moved into this new Studio 13 about uh, seven or eight years ago. Um, so I've been working here ever since. I've worked with Tony lots of times on, on different projects. Um, an album called Rocket Juice and the Moon that he did with uh, Damon Albarn and Flea. I worked with him on some Good, Bad and the Queen stuff. Well, his main kit, um, that, that's what he uses for most of his stuff. Um, so that's a fairly standard setup. The other kit is a kit that he commissioned for the Dr. D um, opera. So that's kind of known as the magic kit. It's got a kind of ceremonial West African sound to it. In general, the, the principles are the same. Um, you're just trying to capture his sounds. He hits the drums really quietly. That's something you notice when you first hear him playing and he just gets a really nice tone out of the, out of the drums. Whereas a lot of people might think you have to hit the drums really hard to, to get a bigger sound. It's kind of the opposite. Often the, um, the harder you hit them, they just kind of become thinner. Um, so he plays really softly, but he just really makes the drums sing. Um, so with the miking, you're just trying, to, just trying to capture that. So on the kick drum, there's a, there's a Shure SM91 inside, so that picks up the punch. Um, there's an MS10 woofer outside, so that gives you the sub. So the kick drum sound is a blend of those two microphones. In terms of snare, toms, it's fairly standard setup. Snare, mic above and below. Overheads, I like to use STC 4038s because they just have really nice sound to them. Um, the top end's not too brittle. Uh, they take EQ really well. In the room, I've got uh, a couple of vintage Neumann M269s. Um, I've got an old ribbon mic that I use that I compress quite heavily in the room as well. So that's kind of a more trashy sound that you can blend in. And for ambience, I've got a mic in the hallway. With the room mics, um, I, I compress them a bit on the way in just to kind of bring out more of the ambience. And then the hallway is really where you, where you get the ambience if you want to make it sound more distant and wet sounding. That you just bring up that channel to, to add that sound. But in general, it's pretty tight sounding. The desk pre's are, are good. They're pretty transparent sounding. They don't add any particular character. So I do like to use outboard pre's as much as I can. So um, API, vintage Neve type stuff, I like to use just because that adds more character than um, the desk pre's do. Also, if you're adding a lot of gain, so for example, on the ribbon mics, um, if you're adding a lot of gain on the desk pre's, then it, it tends to get a little bit noisy. So for, for the ribbon mics, I prefer to use outboard pre's. I use half inch tape for putting mixes down to, so I'm not alien to using analog tape. Um, but I haven't used multi-track tape for a long time. Um, so it was, I was interested in hearing how it would sound on this project and um, it, it definitely adds something. You can see just from the waveform in Pro Tools after it's been bounced in that just a few of the kind of more aggressive transients have just been evened out a bit. Um, so it, it just kind of adds an extra few percent to the sound. Nice little bit of old character. When I record on the way in, I don't do that much processing in terms of um, EQ and compression. Um, I like to just record it fairly flat to so just leave those kind of decisions to the mixing process. Just trying to strike the right balance between the, the direct, the, the close mics and the room. Different patterns I'll approach slightly differently. Some of them I might just predominantly use the close mics to keep it quite tight and focused, whereas some of the other ones might benefit from just having a little bit more of um, of say the hallway or the room mics just to give them a little bit more ambience.